Welcome to the mid-year project update. I'm Lizelle Sambri. I'm a traditionally published author and you may have remembered that back in the beginning of the year, um, I will link it over here, um, I did a video about my 2021 goals for the year and I talked about um, different projects I was working on. I also did a separate video <laughs> over here as well um, talking about uh, project updates, basically the projects I was working on, the projects I plan to work on. And now that we are really more than halfway through the year, um, some things have changed, some things have progressed, and so I thought it would be cool to basically go through my list of projects, um, give a little brief about what the project is about in case you haven't seen any of my previous videos talking about it, um, talk about the status of where it's currently at, and also my plans going forward to the year and like perhaps beyond this year for that project. And so that's what I'm going to be doing today. It is not a writing vlog. I know I said I was doing writing vlogs every week of July in lieu of doing Camp Nano, but there are some interesting things that are happening with that project that you will see in a writing vlog two weeks from now. So that's why today is not a writing vlog. But I'm going to go ahead and get started with talking about these projects. First up, which is my most eminent project, um, the Blood Like Magic sequel, the title of which I don't know when we will actually reveal. We might, maybe we'll reveal it with the cover. I truly have no idea. <laughs> but the sequel to Blood Like Magic, which is my debut novel, that's going to be coming out next year in 2022, I believe in summer, though not confirmed yet, but we'll see. I'm pretty sure it's going to be in summer. Um, and so, yes, that is the sequel to Blood Like Magic, um, which is my book about a family of black witches living in Toronto. So sequel and series finisher. Right now, the status of it is that I... Uh, I believe a couple weeks ago I handed in my last round of developmental edits so the next round of edits will be line edits um, and then copy edits and then proof pages and then maybe one more proof pages and then we'll be done <laughs> but essentially all the big changes in the book are finished and what I'll be doing from this point onward will be little tweaks to it to wording um, I usually try and like add in like nicer phrasing around this time things like that so that's the status of it. My feelings about it. I forgot that I was going to also talk about my feelings about it. <laughs> I do feel really good about it. I think there's a part of me that's like stressed because, you know, some of the things that people like in the first book, it's not necessarily the same things repeating in the second book. Um, it has its own qualities. And I think it's I've had some difficulties like being like, are people going to like the new stuff? Um, but I am really proud of it. And I do think it's a really good series ender um so i'm really happy about that and that's basically like the status of that and the plans for that um it's a contracted book so it's gonna get done <laughs> um and that is blood like mag uh, not blood like magic oh my gosh the sequel to blood like magic <laughs> and my next contracted project is Butcher Birds. So Butcher Birds will be coming out in 2023 in the spring. That is confirmed. Um, and Butcher Birds is about a 17-year-old reluctant medium who has to grapple with the literal and figurative ghosts of her mom's past when they inherit a mansion in Northern Ontario that is not as idyllic as it would seem. And also in a parallel timeline, a budding investigative journalist that's trying to figure out what happened to her. So that one, the current status of it is it's just it's off with my editor. I was like, it's off in the ether. It's not. It's off with my editor. And she said she'll probably be getting edits back to me later this year. So I may be working on developmental edits as soon as late 2021, um, which I imagine is it makes more sense because my book will be out in spring and so it'll be out earlier than like summer schedule. So things kind of need to get going earlier, um, which I'm totally cool with and on board with. So that's great. Um, Butcher Birds, how am I feeling about it? I love Butcher Birds so much. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm so deeply in love with the book. 
<laughs> maybe that will change when I start having to do heavy edits on it. I'll be like, oh my gosh, this is such a slog. This is so painful. Why did anyone think this was good? But for now, I'm really happy about it. I'm super proud of it. I have no like qualms or worries. I'm just like, I feel great about it in my mind. It's like a perfect book and I know it's not perfect, but it feels like a perfect book to me. Um, so I feel great about Butcher Birds. I'm really excited about it. And um, so yeah, the future plans for it is that, you know, we'll do those edits when they come and then I'll probably be working on that for the bulk of 2022 um, as that's going to be my contracted <laughs> project um, because by the time we get into 2022 the blood like magic sequel will basically be finished and so well yeah it'll basically be finished it'll be mostly finished <laughs> and so it'll make sense to switch gears to the book that's going to come out the next year because in publishing you're basically working a year ahead at any one time so that's butcher birds and my last contracted project um potentially because i need to have my proposal approved is bear hunt so bear hunt is about a wealthy family living in toronto who own a private needs based school and i think that's kind of like there's murder <laughs> I think that's kind of the most I'll say about that. There's murder, there's complicated family drama. It's just right on brand for me. Um, so that's Bear Hunt and the status of it is that uh, my proposal is finished. So my agent got back, got her notes back to me. Um, they were just like literally like three little tweaks. And so I fixed them <laughs> right away and sent them back to her. And now they've been sent off to my editor. So we'll see what she says and if that gets approved and I get the green light to go forward with that project, then that will become my 2024 book. Um, and if I don't, then I'll have to figure something out. That's very scary, but we'll see. <laughs> like, I guess that's the nature of like selling a book with like sight unseen um because you know my deal for butcher birds was a two book deal and butcher birds is a standalone so it was a deal that included a mystery standalone book <laughs> and so that was always kind of the name of the game but uh feelings wise i do feel really good about bear hunt i think it's really fun um i think it ties in well as a companion book to Butcher Birds while having a very different quality and a very different sort of story um, but having those tied in elements of my brand of like bloody things and murder and death and complicated family drama. <laughs> um, and this one has a large cast as well which is like Blood Like Magic has a large cast so there's that so i do feel really good about bear hunt but there's always that little bit of hesit hesitancy in the back of my mind where i'm like oh my gosh what if she reads it and she hates it and she's like this is terrible this can't be your book <laughs> try again so yeah just that little bit of like paranoia in the back of my mind but i think it'll probably be all right hopefully so that is bear hunt and yeah i guess if that proposal gets approved i probably will be writing it in late 2022 if they're in spring yeah i'll probably start writing it around that time to get the first draft out and to give myself time to do subsequent drafts so that's kind of the future plan for bear hunt but again up in the air because i need that proposal to be approved so that is it for my contracted projects so those are all the things that i have been paid for that i'm locked down for or have been partially paid for rather that we are locked down on that we are like yep these are things that you must do contractually <laughs> Um, so that's for the contracted projects. And now I'm going to talk about the non-contracted, completely up in the air projects. Let's start with my adult horror. So the beginning of this year, I had a goal of getting an adult horror submission ready 
for like the end of this year or early next year. Um, it was a very big goal. I knew it was a very big push goal <laughs> because it was a lot of work to do um, very rapidly. Uh, and so I wrote an adult horror uh, called Six Days and Five Nights. I wrote it during July NaNoWriMo, decided that I hated it, tried to fix it, realized that it really wasn't working and I had to shelve it. So uh, that took up like <laughs> a few months. I want to say two, two-ish months of kind of, well, I also spent some time plotting. So maybe almost three months of work into that book that really just has to be shelved, which happens sometimes. So the status is that it's been shelved <laughs> and that I don't know that I'll return to it, but it's there if I want to return to it. I am with my feelings. I don't know that I hate it anymore. I think I have enough distance from it now to not feel that strongly about it. I just don't feel like it was right. I don't feel like it was working. I feel like it just ended up being so boxy. I feel like it was like a little too self-insert y um, and just like wasn't fun <laughs> and wasn't really me. And so that's kind of my feeling about it. So future plans, it's probably going to stay buried uh, slash shelved, but that was something I worked on this year. <laughs> um, and now for my second adult horror, which I'm working on right now, which is The Newlyweds. Um, and this was actually um, the original idea that I had for my adult horror when I decided I was going to write it and I switched to the other one. I don't know why. I think I just like thought it wasn't adult enough or like literary enough to be considered an adult work. And now I've done away with that mindset and I'm like, I'm going to write this. I think this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> so the newlyweds is about I actually don't think I've said what it's about before um but it's about a couple who go to stay at an Airbnb that they're hoping will be their future home or at least the woman is hoping will be their future home um they're not newlyweds actually it's a point of pain <laughs> for them both um but they are often perceived as that and like many people in the town are like oh are you newlyweds and they're not um and it's a home invasion horror slash thriller um with I think some fun interesting twists that maybe will or will not be polarizing I guess time will tell um so that's the newlyweds and for that one the status of that right now I'm sharpening up I'm polishing up my plot so I've written out my very detailed chapter summary of what's going to happen in each chapter and all of that is planned out I'm just kind of going through and adding additional details to make sure that is perfect because I don't know that I'm actually going to write a synopsis for this one which was felt like my mistake last time but there are reasons reasons that will be revealed in the future <laughs> so that's the status it's on i'm getting ready to draft it very very soon so that's the status of the newlyweds feeling i'm feeling hesitantly hopeful i think because the other adult horror just like crashed and burned there is a certain level of fear about this one not going well either and just kind of like realizing maybe i just can't write in this age category at all or like maybe i just like this isn't my skill set um but i'm excited about the plot and the characters and the twists um, I'm excited to get going on it and to see what comes of it um, so that's definitely my feeling about it I'm yeah <laughs> tentatively optimistic <laughs> about it um, and so my plans for that I will be as I said drafting very soon um, I will probably, even though I find it very scary, after I do my self-edit, I will probably simultaneously send that draft to my agent and beta readers for comments at the same time, which is a little bit scary to me. I do like to send, I like to send it to beta readers first so that, you know, if it's terrible, they can be like, it's terrible before I expose myself to my agent. But <laughs> I've decided, in the interest of time that I will take this leap and you know we've worked 
on enough books with each other by now that if she's like, wow, this is horrific, it'll be okay because I have other books that she's really loved. <laughs> so I probably won't get dropped off of it. Um, so yeah, that's my feeling about that. And that will be the plan in the future. And I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that it can be submission ready to go on submission for January of next year. Um, very tentative, very hopeful. I do realize there's still like five-ish months in the year. I won't try and do math myself. Um, so I do have time. It's just trying to see what can actually be done. So that's it for the newlyweds. Now here is where things kind of diverge even further <laughs> from what I had planned. So I had a little story seed idea for a Blood Like Magic spin-off. Um, my option for Blood Like Magic was for prequels, sequels, and spin-offs. Um, and originally I was like, I don't think I'm gonna write any of those past. But then I had a little inkling of an idea um, to kind of combine it with a previous idea that I had had planned for um, something set in the future um, and to kind of meld that idea with this spin-off idea and bring those worlds together. And so that is, now I have a spin-off idea and I chatted with my agent about like timing wise, when could a spin-off idea be presented? Um, and she let me know that we could potentially present it even before the sequel to Blood Like Magic came out. And so I've decided to accelerate <laughs> my plans to work on a proposal for that um, spin-off. So now I have decided to do that. So I'm not going to say a lot about it. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say a lot about it. It's kind of difficult because Blood Like Magic is a book I have out and like it still has a sequel to come. And so even like discussing kind of the topic of a spin-off can be difficult <laughs> because it can reveal certain things but I will say what I've said before in a vlog um, which is that you know it's going to be following a brand new witch um, so it wouldn't be following Voya who is the main character of Blood Like Magic be following a brand new witch um, and her gift has something to do with wildflowers. I have to do some wildflower research for that. And it's going to be kind of a found family uh, cast. Um, and I kind of call it my like, it's a bit anti-hero. Uh, it's basically like a bunch of assholes working together <laughs> is how I think of it. So that is that. Um, I do have a title, but I won't share it now. For one, it might just change, however. For two, I don't know, I, I feel weird about like revealing it for whatever reason, <laughs> so I won't. Um, I'll just call it the uh, Blood Like Magic spinoff idea. Uh, so that's what it's about. The status of it is I have been pulling together bits and pieces of characters and like some brainstorming and some snippets. Um, this is very much my initial um, start to how I start a project, which is like doing little brainstorming things in my notes app and making little notes and kind of deciding on characters and which characters do I want the story to revolve around and what do, what do I think those characters' personalities are because I do start character first. So how the character is, is going to inform how the book is. Um, and in this case in which, you know, it's uh, another ensemble cast, um, I want to know their personalities and their backstories because that's going to play into how the plot is as well. So I'm in a very early stage of ideation for that one. I think once I am done with my adult horror, um, I will be shifting more focus onto that project, in which case things will become a lot more concrete at that point. But that's the current status of the project. Um, feelings about it. I am really excited about it. I am, it's so difficult <laughs> with like any new project that you do because it's kind of like, 
you are excited about it but you don't want to be too excited about it in traditional publishing because you're like oh what if this doesn't work out and this doesn't sell and that's the case for any project but in the case of this spin-off um it's kind of like to my understanding if my publisher doesn't want it like it can't go anywhere else um so it's like a one-shot deal <laughs> which is a little bit nerve-wracking as well so I'm excited for the idea. I'm a little nervous for how things are gonna to come together. Um, it's also going to be a bit different slash a bit more difficult for me because I want to make sure that I have a plan for both books going right into the proposal. I don't think for the proposal I need to have that, but for me, I really want to have that because when I was on submission with Blood Like Magic, having that basically a proposal ready for the sequel was really helpful to me in that I could understand how the whole picture of the whole series was going to look and so ideally I would very much like to have a synopsis or you know at least a like <laughs> at least a save the cat beat plan for what the companion novel is going to be like because I forgot to say this um the plan for this spin-off would be another duology so it would be another duology spin-off two books um so that's the future plans for it uh i'm thinking that this year i'll be able to plot it or at least plot and have like sample pages ready for that first book um i don't know how much i'll truly be able to get done this year i have it in my ca calendar to like have this proposal done by the end of this year but i don't know how that's going to shape up between working on the adult horror and working on um my butcher birds edits coming in near the end of the year and also working on the blood like magic sequel edits i don't know how that's going to shape out but those are my plans for it so that is um the blood like magic spin-off <laughs> um so what oh my gosh yeah sorry i just like <laughs> I was like, what could I call it as a placeholder title? And I thought of something and I was like, oh, is that better than the actual title I had for this? I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the kind of longer term on hold projects now. My Dark Academia book when I originally made my goals, plotting this was one of the, this year was one of the goals that has since changed. So the Dark Academia book, I don't know, I can, honestly can't remember how much I shared about it previously, um, but it was, it's basically about a secret society on a university campus, which is like, isn't that just like classic dark academia? <laughs> um, and yeah, it was going to take place at my alma mater, Queen's University in Qu Kingston, Ontario. And that's basically what it's about. Um, the status of it is I don't, I have a really bomb playlist for it. I, I have the feels of the book. I have a bunch of snippets. It's very much like the Blood Like Magic spinoff. It's in that very initial stage. But for this book in particular, it requires a lot more research. Um, I wanted to go to Kingston, Ontario and spend a month there um, basically like researching. I wanted to use the Queen's Library, research the history of the school more so that I can weave in real history. Oh my gosh, am I writing a historical? <laughs> I'm sorry. I literally just thought of that and I was like weaving the history. I was like, oh my gosh, is there this is semi-historical fiction. Um, I guess I did that in Blood Like Magic too, so I don't know why I'm so surprised, but I wanted to weave in the real history of the school and learn more about it, which I didn't really while I was there. I was just a student. I wasn't really <laughs> looking into the history of it, um, but I really wanted to do that. I wanted to take pictures and video and do all of this stuff and I've just become realistic about the fact that I'm probably not going to be able to do that this year. So the status of it ultimately is that it's on hold. 
because I just know I can't do it this year. And my thought process is that for next year, um, I'll apply for a Canada Arts Grant. I did apply for one this year for the adult horror. I still don't know the results of that, but <laughs> um, my plan is to apply for it next year and to see if I can get funding to go and do that trip and do all that research. I'm also hoping in 2022, well, I've already traveled. Um, I am fully vaccinated now, so it's less of a thing, but like maybe in 2022 more things will be open more things will be accessible that sort of thing so that's kind of my feeling about why the status of it is now pushed also i'm finding in traditional publishing there's been this kind of like dark academia boom and it's not that my book is starting to feel samey it's just that it's starting to feel like I don't know I just like I want to I kind of want to like feel it out and see because it feels like there's so much like dark academia happening right now that it does almost feel a little oversaturated um and I don't think there's anything wrong with writing in a genre or writing in a subgenre that feels oversaturated I do think there's still like you know not that many BIPOC representations of dark academia um but I just feel like I'm like really surrounded by it and I almost kind of want to be able to read all those dark academia books that are coming out and like get those vibes um and like kind of see what's out there and like read the subgenre before I like take off with it I think I'll be in a better shape to work on that proposal in 2022 um and the dark academia <laughs> book um i was setting up to be my option book for um my butcher birds book deal um so i would be presenting that option probably in 2023 which is like quite a bit from now so it doesn't really need to happen this year like it happening next year would be perfectly acceptable um so that's why i'm gonna just move it to there uh feelings wise i am really excited about it um this is my first trilogy that i'm planning um which would be like the longest book series i've ever done because i'm you know doing a duology right now and even the blood like magic spinoff is also a duology so that would be exciting to work on that dark academia project and i guess like that's kind of my plans for it but they are also up in the air because i will tell you why <laughs> if i were to sell the blood like magic spin-off when would that come out so if i were to sell the blood like magic spin-off and get two books um and my contracted books go up to 2024 it reasons that those books would come out 2025 and 2026 which means that it would push the dark academia even further and i probably if i presented the proposal and it got accepted and it sold it also wouldn't be being published until like 2027 which is so far away so that's also why it's kind of on like in limbo and that sort of thing um i think my higher priority would be for the blood like magic spin-off if it sold to come out earlier and to have the dark academia just be like the next thing in the future because it would be so far away in that case if everything went well and everything sold that's also another reason for me kind of pushing out the status because this may not become a thing for a very long time so that's kind of also why it's on hold for right now so it's a bit floating it's a bit up in the air um so that's kind of the status about it but i do feel good about it i think it's going to be a fun book um and i do think it has a sort of timelessness to it even though i was talking about feeling like you know maybe this might be saturated i do think it has um the sort of quality to it where it's not like i have to publish it now for it to be worthy um necessarily so that's the status and future plans of the dark academia book next is the most floating most wishy-washy of my projects and that is my space opera the space opera is about uh the most general i can describe it is about a 
earth blank planet that rules over all the other planets and earth being their newest addition um there's rebels there's you know a oppressive power it's very much classic space opera in that way with its own unique elements that i won't describe now because it's so far off from being a thing but that's my space opera and so the status of it is it's so up in the air so i bought this sketchbook you can see it's like the size of my head it's a gigantic sketchbook it's also very thick um and so the reason i got this sketchbook was so that i could very slowly work on this project so that whenever i kind of you know wanted to work on it i could open up a page and i could make it kind of an art practice and i could do a little drawing or something and i could talk about a facet of the world building so this sketchbook is purely for world building because the thing about this book is that it requires a huge amount of world building there's a lot of elements to it i initially did like a first 50 pages of this book and i sent it to my agent and i sent it to betas and the difficulty that my agent had with it was that there was so much going on in one book and that was just the first 50 pages and like there was so much more that was going to go on after um and so the thing about this book in this space opera is this is the only book idea i've had where i can see it spanning five books like i could see this being a very long involved series i could see this being a very crossover series um a sort of young adult book that also blends into adult um and so and there's a lot of planets, there's a lot of different type of people on each planet, there's a lot of political intrigue and espionage, <laughs> which I haven't really done that much before. There's just a lot. And so it's very overwhelming for me <laughs> to like think about working on this project. Um, but I really love the characters that I crafted for it. I think it has really, really strong characters. I think it has a strong hook. I think that hook is going to work for a long time um and so that's why i'm content with like very slowly working on it so far i've just done like two pages in the sketchbook i really would like to do more i just kind of need <laughs> more time to work on it maybe one day i'll be able to kind of like take a month to just focus solely on like working on this world building and sketching and that sort of thing but the time is not now because I have a lot going on that I'm trying to get working on. Um, and so this is so, so far in the future to me. Um, and again, in like an ideal world where all those projects I have planned, where I sell everything, where I sell the Blood Like Magic spinoff, where I sell the Dark Academia right after, this, and I like sell this space opera, it would be coming out 2028, 2029, 2030, 2031, 2032, um, assuming a five book series, which like, I don't think, I, I would have to like, by that time be a, like a big shot for someone to buy five books off me all at once. Um, but it would be very, very far in the future. And so I really don't see myself working on this project in a dedicated way for a very long time. I think it's going to be very bits and pieces over time. Um, that's definitely my feeling about it. So I'm hoping, you know, as years go by, I can like get this sketchbook really filled up. Um, and like, if it's like even half full, that would be wild. Like it would be so much world building to work with. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And like this project, I am still like excited about it. I still have like fever and vision for it. It's just, it's so far off in the future. <laughs> it's not going to happen anytime soon, but I consider it to be an active project still because I do actively think about it all the time. And I'm still like working on this sketchbook thing. And, um, yeah, so it's still like an active project to me, but it's going to be in the quite far future.
And that's it for this mid-year project update. Um, I am happy that I made this video because I feel like I jump around to a lot of different projects and when I do a writing vlog I explain it but I feel like it might sometimes be difficult <laughs> for viewers to like understand what my long-term plans are when I'm jumping around like that and you're just seeing it on and off in a writing vlog um, and so I'm glad to have laid everything out now these are all my plans going forward um at least for like this year and the next year um though it may change slightly next year depending on things i truly don't know we'll see and of course if next year uh i sold that adult horror that would also very much change things <laughs> so Things are always subject to change, but like these are definitely my plans that I'm working towards and I'm hoping to achieve and go forward with in the terms of the contractually ob obligated ones, I must, but in terms of the ones that aren't, that's definitely what I'm hoping for. So yeah, that was my mid-year project update. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. If you have any questions for me, feel free to put them in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.